Uh, hello everyone, I am uh, Mohammed Shoaib from Career Guidance Council team. We welcome you on this webinar on data visualization and analytics using Tableau. So in a couple of minutes, we'll be starting this webinar. So please be on hold for one or two minutes. As still the participants are joining. So during the presentation, if you will have any question, please ask that in the chat window. And yeah, if uh, someone among you is uh, joining through a laptop, probably uh, I'll suggest you to right away go to Tableau Public, download Tableau and keep it handy. Uh, you know, it's like freely available. You can use it uh, obviously uh, for the public purposes in the sense that uh, <clears throat> the data that you would be saving, it would... Uh, be saved in a public domain so obviously you are not supposed to use it for your company's uh, data or if you want to use it for your company probably you will be required to buy it uh, which your company will buy uh, but the tableau public uh, uh, as well as more or less same it provides the same support same visualization so uh, if even if your company is not providing you tableau uh, I would recommend if you are interested, go start using it uh, through Tableau Public and start uh, you know, doing exercises uh, through, uh, you know, online there, there are a couple of uh, things available you, over YouTube. On Tableau itself, there is a very well-developed Tableau training videos, uh, a good community that kind of supports, gives back answers and all. So probably you, it's freely available, you can dive in it and uh, it would be uh, a good experience for you for sure. And uh, before doing uh, going into Tableau, I just wanted to you know brief you about what is data visualization and all. That probably I'll do once the session starts. Yeah, yeah. Nasir bhai, I still feel your voice is a bit low actually. Uh, I hope your volume is uh, at the maximum level. Are you using is it, a speaker? Is it better now? Oh, yeah, I'm it is much better now. Setter. Okay, maybe my volume was low. I just toggled it. Okay. Is it comfortable? Fine. Yeah, yeah it is better now. Okay, okay so hello everyone. Uh, we welcome you on this webinar on data visualization and analytics using Tableau. We have Mr. Sayed Naseh today, who is a consultant working in a leading MNC. We are very thankful for his valuable time today on his webinar. As we all know, data visualization, analytics, data science, all these are like a trending uh, thing in the IT world. A lot of jobs are there. Tableau, a lot of uh, like big MNCs are use, uses Tableau. So having the knowledge of this skill set and how to use Tableau, it is, I think, is going to be very, very uh, essential and important for everyone, everyone who is working in IT. IT. And it, is, it will also help you to establish your career in, uh, in data visualization and analytics. Uh, and Tableau is one of the most frequently used tool in the IT for data visualization. So with this, I will hand over to Mr. Sayed Nasir to please start. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. And uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Uh, so, to begin with, I just, uh, these slides have put across just to point out that the today's session is being held and supported by CGC, which is a registered and non-profit organization, which uh, you know, solely with the purpose of training uh, students. Nasir, why your voice is uh, still getting low actually. Sorry, I'm disturbing you. <clears throat> uh, just give me a second. My let me change my mic and uh, try it. Okay. Yes, we are working on that uh, low eyes. Please, uh, please be on hold. Or request to all the participants. How is it now? 
Sir, we it's clear, but I think uh, you need to be it louder because uh, uh, might be in this platform we need to speak aloud. I believe. Okay, uh, sure. I'll try to uh, be a bit louder. Uh, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. Uh, there is no echo as such, right? No. Yeah, there is no echo. Okay, great. So now, uh, starting with the data. So what I thought, I'll first try and uh, put across the point. What exactly is data visualization? How is it different from data analysis or like what part of data analysis comes under data visualization? So you know, just imagine uh, you are in a company and that company sends across a report uh, to its, uh, say the CEO or someone, and this is how you have submitted the data to CEO. Now, uh, and probably you're saying this data is in her rupees crores, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So, will the CEO entertain this report? Will he try and uh, understand it, or probably uh, he might not clearly get a picture of, say, uh, which particular quarter was the best? or which region is most important for us right if you want to understand these data points how do we go about it instead of picking up the raw data you have to convert it to uh, it into some picture some visual so that the person who is reading it who is understanding it who is listening to it they get a better understanding of what exactly the uh, data uh, is trying to convey or what exactly data is conveying. So I made a simple attempt to do that in the next slide. It's the same data, but now we have a much clear understanding that quarter one was the best among all the quarters. Quarter two was worst among all the quarters. And this is the trend. That's how it's going on. And if you see at the right side, you can see clearly that uh, Central is our biggest chunk with 22%, whereas North is 181 and International 181 crore, both are at 17%, so on and so forth. So basically, we can get a much clearer picture if we are putting data in the form of visuals, in the form of pie chart, in the form of bar chart, in the form of uh, <clears throat> there are a couple of heat maps there uh, in the form of uh, much other things that I'll be taking while I'll be explaining Tableau. Okay, so basically visualization is a combination of art as well as uh, science to be frank. Science in the sense you have to pick the statistics behind it and use it the best way, the best manner you can. And art, because you have to try and understand what's the person in front of you trying to infer from the data. What's the position of the person who's trying to infer the data? What's his vintage point? Why is he exactly looking at that data? And accordingly, you have to alter the visualization. Whether he's looking for a trend, then you have to put it across through, say, quarters, through years, or something like that. If not for trend, whether he's looking about investing in which probably they are looking at uh, how, how do I invest, right? So then you have to try and understand whether they are interested in uh, North region, South region or what. So for identifying that, probably you have to alter uh, your visualization accordingly and put across your data. I hope uh, with this introduction, I wanted to give you across one particular visualization that has stayed with uh, data visualization uh, experts through centuries. This visualization was across in 1869 by an engineer named Minard. Okay, so uh, here comes the point that why data visualization is an art. Right, in the sense that particular person in 1869 did not had any inf uh, tools or any instruments that we currently have and through which we can comfortably uh, put data, convert 
thousands and thousands of uh, data lines into visualization. Whereas uh, this person, he simply used a few sketch pens probably and uh, lines and he explained dimensions on a 2D diagram. Uh, let's wait for a second. I'm not able to hear. Nasibai. Are you? Hello? No, I'm, Are you, not, I'm changing my room. Actually, yeah. there's a lot of disturbance out here. I see. Okay. I am extremely sorry about that. Uh, am I audible now? It's better? Yes, yes, it's better. Clear. Sure. Uh, so, this particular person, he explained six dimensions on a 2D diagram. How did he do that? You can see uh, the width of the particular uh, <clears throat> line that has been shown. This data basically shows uh, marching of uh, French army to Moscow. Uh, which was Napoleon's one of the famous attacks in his uh, in which he failed miserably and uh, that information was conveyed through this particular diagram. So Napoleon started here and the width of the diagram actually shows the number of people who were marching towards Moscow and based on that uh, he kind of explained how uh, you know you can see over here uh, Somewhere it says the scale. Basically, you can measure the width and decide, uh, identify how many people were there at part that particular location at Dorbos, at Slomans, at Witzbeck, whatever, Gagarian, whatever. Right. And the red line indicates the forward march, the black line indicates the reverse march. Okay. And then dates along with the temperature in that particular city which kind of explains why people were dying in so many numbers, though they were not fighting, right? At minus nine, minus 21, minus 11 degrees, minus 20 degrees, minus 24, whatever, whatever, right? So basically he explained the number of troops based on the width of the diagram, the distance traveled, the direction through the color, then the temperature, then the geography by uh, putting the locations by putting the names of the cities and then location relative to dates so he kind of have put the dates as well over here which were getting correlated with the locations so basically with one diagram he has explained a lot of information and this basically is what is expected out of a good data visual okay so if we would have put reams and reams or sheets and sheets of paper explaining uh, the number of people, the number of uh, uh, the troops, the locations, etc, etc, et it might not have conveyed so good an information which is getting conveyed over here with much more ease, right? Here we have location and how many people died at that location. You can clearly identify that. Okay. So this was just an example by uh, an engineer named Minard uh, in 1869. Uh, and this considered to be one of the masterpieces of data visualization. Okay. Now, moving forward, let me come to Tableau. Okay, so I hope uh, you people have downloaded the application. Then I as well hope that you have downloaded that Excel sheet that says Tableau Super Score. Okay, it's one of the data sets that uh, most of the Tableau training videos use. And I have also stuck to it just because, you know, it would help you people to understand more and more out of it. Okay, and a few visualizations that I would try and cover are bar graph, uh, the map, then column chart, bubble chart, and dashboard. So this would be pretty uh, basic and uh, you know primitive sort of training. Uh, it is more with an intention of introducing you people to the Tableau rather than giving you a very extensive uh, idea about the software as such. Uh, now I'm moving to Tableau, and I hope. Uh, you people have also uh, downloaded it and uh, kept it ready. If uh, any one of you has any doubts or you want uh, any information about downloading, just 
ping in the chat box. I'll respond. Okay, uh, let me move. Meanwhile, if anyone has a, any query, you can ping. So let me start from start, okay? So uh, let me close this down. Once you start Tableau, uh, this is after downloading. Okay. Now, what you can basically do is, uh, I am opening a file which I've already, uh, you know, prepared for this session. But uh, if you open a new file and click over here at data source, you will be asked uh, uh, the source of the data. Okay, so let me do that as well. When you open a new sheet, it would look something like this. Okay. And once you do that, you are supposed to click on data source. Fine. And here it says connect to a file which is either Excel or text file, access, GSO, and PDF, special file, statistical file. Okay. So uh, basically, Tableau is a software that is more for visualization and less for uh, handling the numbers or data analytics as such. Okay, so you cannot analyze data the way you can do that in say Excel or R. Rather, you have to visualize the data. Okay, now I'm connecting it to a file. Okay, so basically I've clicked on Excel and it's opening a particular uh, you know folder in which I have saved the particular file which I'm using it now uh, you can do that hopefully I pulled in that data I'm clicking on orders Sorry, someone Just give me a second. A couple of questions here. Okay, there's one, one question. Yes. So uh, which version is it? I'm using Tableau, des uh, I'm using desktop. You can use desktop and uh, either it would be 64 bit or 34 bit. You have to, based on your uh, operating system, you have to download it. This was for Osmo Yudin. Okay, and second query was from Kalyan. Difference between Tableau and Power BI. So basically Tableau and Power BI, they are more or less same. Uh, there's not much difference actually. Uh, Tableau is being considered more user friendly in the sense it's much more easier to uh, use data uh, in Tableau whereas in Power BI it's a bit uh, not so intuitive basically Power BI is from uh, Microsoft so it's trying to uh, compete with Tableau uh, the way it provides us uh, office in the sense uh, word Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft uh, is trying to compete with Tableau and it's providing Power BI. Whereas Tableau is far more uh, uh, newer company. It is providing uh, and it's completely and more focused on uh, visualization because of that Tableau is considered to be far more user friendly relatively. But other than that, I haven't seen much difference between the two. Fine. Uh, now coming to uh, once we have done the connection, we can go to worksheet. Moving to worksheet. And once you do that, if you, you might have remembered when we opened it first, 
it didn't had anything actually on the left on the right on the top uh, it was blank but now we can see all the uh, data headers that are being shown uh, that are being uh, shown over here which are nothing but the headers in the excel file so pro id order id order date shift date shift mode everything is being shown over here okay and arranged in alphabetical order and these are dimensions on which data would be analyzed and these are the measures okay so uh, basically basically dimension is nothing but uh, you know the parameters say uh, in my previous example the quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four uh, as well as north south east west those were the dimensions right and the data or the measures measures is nothing but the data that was provided in in the boxes right in the ppt that i have shown some time back okay now once you have this uh, ready with me and uh, is anyone following me along while i'm working on this okay great so uh, are you guys with me um, have you reached till here till the point where i have reached could you say the navigation again just just uh, just just say it verbally that, that will be fine okay uh, nothing so you have to click on data so uh, and you have downloaded that samples uh, super store data as well right yeah it's installing it's uh, 50% done okay okay i'll i'll move forward and maybe once you are ready you can ask if you get it out okay okay fine sure oh great uh, so once we have this on the left side we have the headers as well as measures from which we will be pulling data and then uh, this is not but how we are going to manipulate the uh, visualization this kind of explains or it will be used to manipulate the visualization whereas this pane or this window is for the filters and this is for the pages okay now for example uh, we have all these visualizations that can be over here okay so this is text table heat map highlight tables you can see the names uh, at the bottom symbol map simple map pie chart horizontal bar stack bar sided bar tree map so on and so forth okay so now let us start with a simple thing okay so i'll be making a bar graph how do i do that so let me try and see in which state how much was the sale so i'm picking up state dropping it as rows so it kind of gave me the names of the states in order of spelling now i want to pick up sales so either i can pick up sales i can pick up quantity profit discount whatever so let me pick up sales so once i put it across as columns it has started giving me data so sales great now it, uh, i can uh, you know convert it into different formats as i want okay so it's as simple as clicking So 
So once I have taken the maps, it has changed into map, giving which state is giving me how much sales. I'm back to back bar chart. This is column chart. Right. Now you can try and play around with it. This is tree map. This kind of gives me California, New York, Texas, whatever, whatnot. Now I'm back to bar chart. Coming to back uh, bar chart, this is not giving so much of information probably. So I'll try and start manipulating it. There are a couple of things I can do over here. So here I can be sorting it in terms of ascending or descending. So this being sale, I would like to see in order of descending. That is the best to the worst. Just click on it and here you are. With California being highest, New York being next, Texas being next, Washington, so on and so forth. Okay. This is great. It kind of gave me explanation of which particular, uh, you know, states are giving me how much say. Uh, so Kalyan sample data is, uh, it's named as Superstore data. You can simply Google it and uh, you can download it. Uh, and Imu, are you ready? I mean, uh, have you reached where I have reached? You can type uh, yes, no. So once you have reached over here, uh, let me try and use another visualization. Again, state sales. And this time I'm doing a map. Okay. Once I have done that, Okay, so Shabazz is asking how to add the quantity and numbers with product names. Mm, yeah, we'll try that as well. Uh, maybe once I'm done with this. So once you have drawn a map, you can start manipulating it. So for example, over here, this is not giving me a very clear picture in the sense which uh, states say California and Texas, they are at the highest for 57,000 and 170,000, as well as New York, which is at 310,000, and Washington, which is at 138,000, and then the rest of the states. So, the darker the uh, palette is, or the darker the shade is, uh, the higher the the higher the sales is. So you can see it over here on the left side. Right. Now I can manipulate this color. So simply I click on color, I edit color, and then I have options in the pack. Right. So let me use orange blue diverging or red green diverging. So let me use this. This kind of indicates 980, it's red, low sales red, and high sales green, which is a good indicator. Clearly it's giving me this much better visual. I can change the number of steps over here. Try and manipulate it in many other manners. Borders, hello. So uh, I won't be dwelling in all these details over here, but uh, I would like you people to try and explore this. Okay. You can alter the label. Font can be altered. So because it's red and green over here, maybe if my font is white, that's much better. 
So I'll do that. So, okay, now text font color, show mark labels, don't show, right. So I can play around with this and what I suggest is you people should try more and more and try and understand it. So since I have altered the color to white, it's not showing it white, if I alter it according, it will change. Okay, so uh, the first visual that we have used is now you can see the title has changed according to the name, right? And she two has changed map, changed. Now, a uh, good uh, way of uh, explaining or expressing your data visualization is have the title which is far more explanatory. So probably you can have the sheet name over here. You can delete the sheet name based on whatever you uh, have considered uh, relevant. And then I write sheet name that is bar chart giving profits. Now it has given that. Right, and if I want to add data labels, I can do that. Always show it gives me the data label. So if I want data labels, I can add that. And uh, similarly, I can play around with it. I can change the colors, and uh, so say if I put sales the color and then sales over here i'm holding a control basically so i've put sales both in color as well as columns so now it's kind of giving me uh, higher the sale darker the color basically what we have seen in maps right so uh, with this i have covered bar graph and map trying to give you a feel of how you can uh, use Tableau very simply and easily. You know, simple data which is there in Excel. It has been pulled in. Once you have pulled it in, you have uh, uh, simply dragged and dropped things and it has given you a visualization which is much more presentable, far more easy to comprehend and use. Great. Any doubts till here? Okay, now uh, let me try and uh, pick up a few other visualizations. So let me recall what I had next. Okay. So next what I was thinking of was a column chart. So how do we do that? simple same way let me have a state this column and sales so okay i want to have it in descending order it's coming descending order now suppose i want to see what are uh, you know different categories of sales that are going to each uh, state so basically uh, i should have done this uh, before itself but now i'm explaining it this superstore data it pertains to random data from an imaginary superstore actually okay uh retail outlets and what they have is uh, a set of uh, customers to whom they are selling bunch of products across the years 
across the states, across the categories, uh, and they have got order ID, order date, so on and so forth. So uh, data would be looking uh, a bit more in, in the form of like this better I show you the Excel. So order date, tip date, chip mode, segment, country, city, state, blah, 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 blah. And quantity discount profit and subcategory and category. So let us try and understand what are the categories that are available over here. Okay. So basically furniture, office supply, technology. These are the categories in which products are being sold. Segment by segment, they mean consumer segment, corporate segment. Subcategories are like accessories, plants, art, blah, 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 whatever. Right. So now let me go back to this. Let me try and see which segment is how big in each state. How would I do that? Probably I can put it over here. No. It's really random data. I mean, uh, it's not giving me a very good understanding of how the sales is. Right. Maybe a better way, because this seems to be too clever. Let me try and put it on color. This seems to be much better thing. You know, California. These are the three segments: home office, corporate, and uh, consumer. Home office, corporate, consumer. So basically, the category and the sales. Right. So once I've done that, uh, maybe uh, I'm taking this to my boss, and he's like, "I'm not interested in these small kids. Just remove those. What do I do? So I'll try and filter. How do I filter? It's as easy as the way we have filtered. Filter. Just drag and drop in the filter. A new window pops up. It asks you, how do you want to filter? How do you want to filter? Whether you want to filter on sum, on average, on median, on count, min, max, standard deviation, what? Suppose I say sum. It asks me range of values, or is it the least, or is it the most, or something other than that. So let me see i want only those states that have more than 10000 states okay. and that's it it has filtered it accordingly and it's giving me only those states that have more than 10000 states now suppose my boss wants to keep altering it and see so i'll say Show filter. It shows me the filter. I'm removing off the top ones if I want to. I'm removing the bottom ones, you know, more than say 50,000. Right. Only these five states. More than 14,000. Only these states. I can change this. Remove filter. Edit filter, remove filter, format filter. You can customize it. Show readouts, show slider, show null controls. Show buttons. Uh, and in fact, it, it has the option of drop down as well. Let us go and do that again. Uh, and then probably I want to see which particular, uh, what was that category, I guess. Right. Yeah, category. So I want to filter according to category as well. So I say all, so okay, I'm going to show category as well as a filter, 
then I can have it just like drop down and list title. So in this case, maybe a single value list. So in furniture, this is the sale. In office supply, this is the sale. In technology, this is the sale. Or if I want to have multiple, you can select all. You can select from the office and technology, whatnot. So this is like as simple as right and. Uh, the idea behind it is not about being able to put it across it's really easy and maybe within an hour you can learn how to do that but then leveraging it to your needs leveraging it so as to put across the right information in the right context based on the audience that's something that is really important okay so so we'll try and understand a few such things actually. Now, uh, maybe I've already shown how to alter the sheet name and all that. Right. Now let us move further. Let me see what I put next. Right. So here I have put. Okay. Next. Uh, so source column chart. We can alter the name. Of We want to change it. I'm showing it again so that if someone has not noticed it. Column chart. Is. Now, you know, there's uh, much uh, uh, a rather interesting feature over here, which uh, I uh, try and use a lot of times. Kind of indicates uh, you can use a filter in the title, actually. So, uh, can you go on mute? Someone is not on mute. And then Everything says sales above, and then here I want to insert the filter. So it gives from 26 to 229. You can put it 5,000 years ago. I say 50,000. It says 50,000 to 229. It gives you that. So it simply the title changes according to your field. And something really useful and cool that the person who's reading it, uh, he'll be very clear about uh, what this data around. Fair enough. And now, uh, let me move to next thing. Now we have seen that, uh, you know, California, New York, Texas, Washington, Pennsylvania, Florida, these probably are the best states in which you are doing sales, right? And uh, your boss is really happy with the people who are working in those three, four states. But should he be? Let us see. Trying to put across so as to get some more information, dig out some more information. Okay, so let me pull in same thing states. And see. 
Okay. Now I'm clicking on it. And I want to scatter plot. This is my whole plot. Yeah, it, it won't take two. So, yes. and see, I want to see how's the profit. So, if you see overall, then sales are. 2.3 million that is 2.29 million whereas profit is 286,000 right now I want some detail and it gave me a very clear picture that here in California New York the sales as well as profit is high okay washington sales is low profit is relatively low but there are a bunch of company uh, states sorry, where we have sales but no profit right so i can even color different states different color and then i can size it according to say quantity so where is the quantity high where is it? so this kind of gives me sale versus profit breakdown and i can play around with it so you can see this line over here below it there is a low prof, uh, profit negative profit and above it there is high profit so in spite of selling a lot in texas you can see texas was probably what third yeah third biggest one the third biggest in terms of sales but its profit is in negative so probably your boss might have had been happier with texas compared to say kentucky but he shouldn't have had been because Kentucky, though it's selling 36,000, it's making a profit of 11,000, which is pretty good, 33%. Whereas Texas is selling 170,000, but it is making a loss of 25,000. So just simply putting across profit versus sales, we are getting a much clearer picture in the sense who's doing good, who's doing bad. I've altered it. Profit is coming on x axis, now sales on the y axis. Just I did that so as to you know we can focus on profit and we have this line and everything left to it is kind of shown in the graph, right? So I can press control, drag and drop it here. Is kind of giving me a color that whatever is negative is in there. Don't to alter the color. I added the color. Magnetic. Red blue diverging. Say or say red green if it's there or if it's that. Okay. So two sperms that are making. Profit that are in those states that I'm making profit are in green, whereas those that are not making a profit are in red. And in fact, this is a curious case in the sense California uh, size. What's it indicating? It's in this state, I guess. I guess the size of the state I'm thinking. Size is not so relevant. Here. So I guess you got the feel, right? So this visual, again, I can edit the heading.
Uh, let me see next what I have put. Uh, any doubts to be here? Uh, is anyone following along with me? So Shabazz has asked, do we have option to filter product and country wise say, yeah, you can do that. So basically instead of state, you can put, uh, yeah, let, let's try that. Okay. So let me put filter here. I say all, I say okay. And then I'm asking you to show the filter. Let me try and use a, Single value drop down, single value slider, multiple value list, multiple value drop down. This looks neater. You can search. Say I want to see Texas. So I've unclicked all and then I'm picking up. Say which were the biggest ones? That was Texas, California, right? And um, for this thing. So let me put a piece in. Alabama. So I'm trying to compare these three four states. It gives me a good idea. And what was the other thing? What do we have option to filter product and country wise save? Okay. And then world map. Okay. So in the map as well, you can do that, not a problem. This is how it works. Anyone, any other doubt? Yes. Cool. Any other doubt? So having come till here, let me try and understand the idea called dashboarding. Okay. So I click here, it shows new dashboard. So what's the difference between a sheet and a dashboard? A sheet is nothing but uh, a data visual in which you can have only one single visualization right say bar graph say map say column chart say table chart whereas in a dashboard you can have multiple data points pulled in and put across and those can be used for putting across a particular store okay so uh, i have got two options over here for putting it uh, the so for putting the dashboard one is tied another is floating let's first try with the tide so uh, once we have put across all these sheets those appear on the left side in the dashboard you can give the name to dashboard simply drag and drop it simply drag and drop it So this is one way in which it is tied. Okay. By tied, it kind of means that the data covers the full, uh, sorry, the visual covers the full space available in the dashboard. Okay. So if I'm putting column chart over here, it 
will occupy space like this, like this, and I'll, I'll brief uh, about it uh, as we move forward. But yeah, this is how you drag and drop it and you use it. I can remove it the way I want. And in floating, if I drag a map like this, it won't occupy the full space. I can handle it and then position it where I want it to. Right. So let me see how I did that in my test. Cool. So I'll put profit and let me try and do the same. So when we drag and drop a map, is dragging the associated filters as well as labels, right? So let me pick up all. Great. Uh, so let me alter the title. me saves keep it here. I can you know, manipulate it the way I want to. It's fairly intuitive, fairly easy, very much self-explanatory. In fact, the only thing we need over here is practice, nothing else. I mean, you, once you start working on it, it's more like uh, you know, driving a once you get comfortable around it, you can you know do whatever you want with it. You can wheel it around, you can go wrong side. I mean, I'm not saying you should do that, but yeah, when you are at the beginning, you just don't do all that. What you do is you just are very cautious while handling it. You try and understand how does this work, how does it operate and all that. But once you are comfortable with the way the data is used, the data works, you will try and use it in so many ways and manners that you start enjoying it. You start exploring new and new ways and uh, trying to put it in more and more visuals. So say here, for example, we have borders as well, right? If I click on layout, no border or let me have some border here with a red color. This is how it looks. I can alter this. I can edit the title. I can edit it. So that it looks much better, much more neat, much more presentable. Now let me drag and drop. And all its filters I'm going to the left. Let's make it more beautiful. Adding a water. Green color. Nice. Uh, this is some disturbance. Someone has on disturbance. You want to speak something? 
Thank you. I think there's some way to edit this heading as well. Not edit title. Now I can make it bold, make it center. So I'm uh, you know, trying to show you how a visual which was not looking so cool starts looking much better. And uh, there's no big deal about it actually. It's a simple way in which you are using the tools available to you. So I, in fact, have you know kept it in different fonts, which you are not supposed to do. So let me try and keep everything in black center. Table medium nine. Table medium nine. Table medium nine. And now there is one catch. When I am filtering, this filter is operating only on the part. Whereas this filter as well is operating on the bottom. And this filter is operating only on the top. Right. But most of the times when people are seeing a visual of this particular dashboard, they would want that all filters are operating for all the visuals that are available in that figure so that there is no confusion to see which one is operating with for, for what. Okay. So to do that, you can go to column chart, filter, apply to all using the data source, selected worksheet, only this worksheet, all using this data source. Apply to all using this data source. Now let's go back here and nice. So once I remove it, so suppose I just want to see the furniture. So in furniture category, instrument of consumer, corporate, and home office, this is how it's operating, right? And for sales, let me say, I'm not interested in those small uh, companies. I want to, well, those small states. Rather, I want to see sales in only those states which have about 50,000. Only these two. For furniture segment, 50,000. So, I say 10,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the states which have this particular sales values in furniture category and this is how they are right from sales from this to this from this to this actually trust me i mean this is really crude uh, dashboard you have to work a lot on it you have to work on its color you have to work on its headings and uh, get it across in much better way but probably if you think that uh, what's the story i want to spin around what's the story i want to put across this is one uh, you know way of uh, doing it yeah i want to see the sales for this category for these particular states right 
and say I want to see in terms of uh, you know say only office supplies this is how it is and uh, that's it um, pretty much this is what I had with me then just let me show what okay uh, so uh, fair enough this is more or less what I had with me uh, for you guys and uh, probably if you guys have any doubts I'll be happy to help you with if I'm not able to I'll try and search for it and get get back to you but my basic uh, idea for today's session was more around giving you a feel of how easy Tableau is. You know, it's one of the easiest things probably you can do. Dragging and dropping data into boxes and then boom, getting a really good visual out of it. And once you get a good visual out of it, manipulating it, operating it and getting a good story across right if you simply put data in numbers you won't be able to make that impact but you show something like this to your client to someone who's listening to you maybe your boss or uh, maybe your team that's gonna have uh, your data used for some sales or something this would be a very powerful way of explaining it okay so basically i, I have put that in presentation mode and uh, this is pretty much about tableau and in fact power bi is also more or less similar uh, and you can use it uh, yeah one one thing probably i wanted to add which i missed for uh, is that you can have a uh, measured values as well okay so i haven't prepared much around it because i thought uh, maybe it would be slightly confusing for those who have just started using Tableau or just it's their first experience with uh, it. Uh, but yeah, maybe if you guys are interested, I'll try and uh, do that. But basically, you can have a, a new measure. Okay, somewhere is there. Yeah, create. You'll have a calculated field where you can have a new measure. So, so suppose. Oops, and have a say if profit is, is greater than zero. And oh, sure is it good work? So somewhere it might have come in a Yeah, here it is. So I can filter accordingly. In the laws we're making perfect, I say all and show filter. And then if I want to see those companies, those states that are making a profit, I click on it. Or if I want to check which are making a loss, these are loss. So if you remember, Texas was a negative, right? And simply clicking in a loss, I have found those states which are in negative. So I can concentrate on these, on improving these. 
making a profit these are those states that are making a profit okay so this is nothing but measure uh, we can try and manipulate it in many ways uh, and make use of tableau very very powerfully in fact you know you can alter the dates and say what's probably you want to pick up which shipments have got delayed which shipments have gone much before the expected time you can do that uh, the same way in which i have done this profit check and in fact you can edit it if you want to you can change the name uh, and then you can alter it accordingly and it would be a good way to uh, use it for multiple purposes and this you will learn more and more as you use tableau more and more right in fact i would like to say that i'm also not a very big expert on tableau it's not my core competency as such i just know how to use it and uh, try and use it uh, for some clients who want some uh, data visualization and all but you know it's one of the most powerful tools that can come handy to those who are trying to put across a story to put across an information okay so i guess my time is still one but uh, this is what i have got and if you guys have any doubts uh, we can have that for next 15 minutes and that's it can we move our dashboard title so i don't know what exactly you mean but uh, yeah we can uh, in fact uh, add title there is some way in that let me see So we can show title. So it's copying the name of the sheet we can edit it and the same manner we can do. So let me see it here. And then let me insert sheet name will be different. So it's not going and picking any uh, filter, but I guess it does. No, I think it's it won't. But yeah, this is how we put it. Actually, can give it a border. You can give it a background. That's it. Anyone else? Any doubt? So maybe the calculated field that we have kept, we can apply, apply it to all. I guess I have to drag it again to pull that particular Excel here, and then uh, I'll be using it accordingly. But yeah, probably you get an idea how how that works. Great. So that's pretty much from me. Any anyone any doubt? <laughs>